Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Modded Career. I'm Oofle Spoofle and today's episode is going to be a big one because we have several major milestones coming up for our space agency. Uh, well, two to be exact, but they're still, you know, pretty big milestones nonetheless. Now, of course, we are now designing our first craft for this episode and the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that, yes, that is, a, that is a command pod right there, and yes, we are doing our first crewed mission of our space agency. Finally, I have left it kind of late to do my first one, to be honest. We have, we have had three episodes of just, you know, probe after probe, but finally, we are stepping into the wonderful world of crewed spaceflight. Now, Jebediah Kerman is going to be our brave Kerbonaut. He is going to be the first one in orbit, in fact. And uh, he's going to be going to a polar orbit, and that's because I thought that, you know, the EVA report and the crew report experiments were biome-specific. Yeah, it turns out that they're actually not. I'm not sure why I thought that, because I've, <laughs> I've done this before. But, yeah, oh well, slightly pointless going into a polar orbit here, but we still do get some decent science nonetheless. There was not a contract for this, I just kind of felt like doing it. And I feel, you know, I felt it was about time to start doing some crewed spaceflight because I don't really want to go down the route of just only doing probes. Because, you know, where's the fun in that? You have to, you have to get some kerbals on, you know, you've got to pop, got to plant some flags, got to get some footprints down. Uh, that's really where the fun is in this game. So, you know, hopefully we'll be seeing a lot more crewed spaceflight in the future. And uh, hopefully, you know, I might try to do a you know, crude mun landing in the next episode, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but for now, we can do our first spacewalk of our space program. And there we go, Jebediah just collecting some science from orbit of Kerbin. Now, of course, I am going with the Soviet-style command pod. And um, it's not actually something that I've used before, but now that I've actually used it, I have some respect for it. You know, I might try using it a lot more because there's just something really really satisfying about the way it just kind of wobbles into place on re-entry because this thing is very very stable in the backwards direction so as you can see it yeah it handles re-entry absolutely fine and um you don't need to input any controls at all um so you know it's it's pretty good especially for early game missions like this but here we go we can open our parachute and Jebediah Kerman can safely return home uh, to Kerbin. And of course we are splashing into the ocean at a nice comfortable low speed. So the second launch of this video is going to be a quick one and if you remember in the last episode I launched the SunSat probe and the plan for that one was to send it into solar orbit and then collect some science and transmit it back to Kerbin. But it didn't quite go to plan because I did not have the right kind of antenna, so yeah, I couldn't transmit the science back, which was really annoying. Um, it means that I couldn't fulfill the contract. So in this launch, I'm going to do just that. Um, it's The reason I didn't show the build process is because it's literally the exact same thing as in the last episode, but I've just included a better antenna on board. So here we are, we can get into orbit of Kerbin, uh, deploy that high gain antenna, which should hopefully... Uh, be enough to communicate from outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence. But here we are just doing our escape burn. I decided to do it all in one burn along with our uh, in orbital insertion burn. And we get a nice flyby of the Mon there. And there we go. We've already transmitted our first experiments back. So I'd call that mission a success. Now the third mission of this video is going to be an ambitious one. And as you can see right here, we are building a rover. So if you remember in the last episode, I did accept a contract to land on the Mun. And um, we're not just going to be doing a normal lander like a, just a regular probe. We are going to be landing a rover so that we can, you know, get as much science out of our first Mun landing as possible. Because, you know, with a rover, the great thing about them is that you can just drive around pretty much wherever you want. And um, obviously we have all these biome-specific experiments. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of science to be gained from building a rover like this. As you can see, I've got our rover scanning arm there, which is actually a really good experiment. It returns a lot of science, and I believe it's biome-specific biome for some surface features. I could be wrong about that, though. But I'm, I'm also building a sky crane for this. And um, I should probably also mention that I've installed the Outer Planets mod 
for this save. It's not really something that's, you know, I probably won't be exploring those planets for some time to come. But, you know, eventually it just means that, you know, there's a lot more to do in the solar system because, you know, the stock system is quite limited. There's only 11 celestial bodies. Um, so, you know, the Outer Planets mod, it's great. You know, it adds three more gas giants and another dwarf planet, in fact. So, yeah. Unfortunately, Research Bodies seems to have broken. Um, Research Bodies is a great mod if you're playing a planet pack for the first time. And in this case, I am playing Outer Planets for the first time in this save. But unfortunately, Research Bodies just seems to have stopped working. Every time I try to enter the observatory, like nothing really happens and I, <laughs> I just kind of get stuck. So, you know, hopefully I can get it working. But anyway, we can just go ahead and launch our rover. Now, again, we're still using that, that Merlin 1A engine, and we might be pushing it to its very limits here, because it only had a thrust to rate ratio of about 1.2 or 1.3 here, so it got off to a very slow start. I know it might not look like it because the video is sped up by four times, but um, it might have been a little bit inefficient, so I really should be upgrading to a better engine at this point, but <laughs> at least we won't be seeing much of that Merlin 1A engine now, because we have staged it away. And uh, we can use this up stage to get into orbit of Kerbin. So as you can see, we have deployed our fairing. And um, we've revealed our rover. And now you can see there's a weird spinning instrument on the top. That's a controller for the Bon Voyage uh, rover autopilot. It's actually a great mod that allows you to drive your rovers in the background. Because if you've ever dr like tried to drive a rover in KSP before, you'll know that it takes absolutely forever to get anywhere. And it's just not the kind of thing I want to be wasting my time on in this career save. So, yeah. Um, it, you know, the rovers are a bit slower when using Bon Voyage, but <laughs> they also never crash um, because it's that good of an autopilot, I guess. So, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, exploit that mod too much because, you know, I'm not just going to drive my rover to every biome. I am going to, you know, just have it slowly driving around in the background, I guess. But anyway, we are. We can now land our rover on the Mun, and you'd think that with 900 meters per second delta V wouldn't be an issue, but this thing actually has a very low thrust rate ratio, so you end up losing a lot of delta V to gravity, um, which isn't really ideal, and I must admit, I'm really not good at low TWR landing, so I was kind of nervous going into this, and you can probably tell just from the way I'm piloting it, um, but I decided here to kill off all my horizontal speed and in fact I'll slow down the footage for the final approach. But right here everything was going just fine, I had my speed completely under control and I probably would have landed this just fine but then I looked in the bottom left corner, saw that my delta V had gone below 100 and you know I probably would have been fine at this point but I kind of panicked a little bit and I shut off my engines and you know decided to do a last second burn and yeah that last second burn it was a little bit too last second. Um, so yeah, our rover was just came smashing down into the ground at 20 meters per second, but by some stroke of luck, we managed to land back on our wheels there, and we only lost one wheel. That's actually all we lost. So after we've deployed that sky crane, which is really satisfying if you ask me, as you can see, it drives absolutely fine despite only having five wheels. So I decided to drive it over to this crater over here so we can scan it for some free science. And um, I should probably say, as you're about to see here, it's a good thing I don't drive in real life because I would be really bad at parking. Uh, so here I noticed that I was too far away from the crater to be able to scan it. And then I, I don't even know what this is. Like, I don't know why I'm showing this to you. I just look like a terrible rover driver. But anyway, um, you can look at the satisfying rover scanning animation, I guess. And there we go. I just love that animation so much. So the fourth and final mission of this video is going to be another short one and um, there's one reason I have to do this and it's basically money because when I was about to launch that Mun rover mission I was quite low on money and in I in fact did not have enough money to actually launch it. So what I did was I went over to mission control and I accepted a contract just for the advanced funds pretty much. Now, I am going to be a good space agency manager and actually do the contract rather than just cancelling it. 
Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing right here. And the, the contract is to perform a low resolution resource scan of the MUN. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that we have done quite a lot in this uh, series already. So I'm not going to show, you know, the really lengthy process of me doing this. We're using the same trick to get this thing into a polar orbit of the MUN. I know I've mentioned that, well, only twice really, but it feels like I've mentioned it a million times at this point. Um, and I also know that that probe looks like some weird cartoon insect with those two antenna dishes. That was really not what I was going for when I designed this, but that's just the way it turned out really, so... Hey. So yes, we can put this thing on a collision course and then raise our periapsis using a normal burn. And I'm putting this thing in quite a high orbit, in fact. It's going to 300 kilometers, uh, just because that is the ideal altitude for our multispectral scanner here. And there we go, we can do our insertion burn. And then we can also crossfade across to when we've completed our ScanSat map. Well, not quite completed, but it's close enough. So there we go. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this video. So if you did enjoy, Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and all of that good generic YouTube stuff. If you want to join my Discord, there's going to be a link in the description. But anyway, thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, have a great rest of your day.